Wow. So yeah, be, be prepared. Uh, be in prayer this coming week as we go into the new year uh, about, you know what, Lord, what is my, my, my position? What is my spot? Where am I supposed to be serving? How can I kick up a little dust for your kingdom? And you happen to be fellowshipping here at Skyline, so that's going to mean how can I kick up some dust here in Skyline uh, for the kingdom of God? And there's nobody in this room and those that are going to be coming into here that can ever say, God's done with me. No, he's not done with you until he takes you. So there's always something for you to do uh, for the kingdom. Does it make you uh, awesome in God's eyes? Because you're already awesome in God's eyes because you believe in Jesus. And if you don't today believe in him, then you'll be awesome in God's eyes. And then he empowers you and he, and he helps you to work. Uh, through to to conquer things that you would never conquer to think about things and go places that you never ever would have thought you would ever have gone because God is just amazing like that he's the creator he's the maker and he's the path clearer for you well that's a three-point sermon right there pastor Lauren wow amen God bless you well listen I want to read to you this morning um, we're going to take communion uh, afterwards and I want to do that hopefully with families and I'll give you some instructions on that but I want to read to you something real briefly here about communion and it says this 1 Corinthians 11 starting in chapter or starting in verse 23 for I received from the Lord which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he, he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he took the cup after supper saying the cup of the new covenant is my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again now I have uh, I've shied away a little bit from Facebook just for personal reasons um, and uh, but I did happen to put a post on yesterday I don't know if you all saw that um, I just couldn't, I, it was, um, last week I was talking about and, and we were preaching about God's dream to have a people who would be his people and he could be their God. And we walked through scripture from Genesis all the way to Revelation of how uh, through all these years he has put things into place that are odd enough to be God enough, moments. And, and that was what we called his Christmas dream if God dreamed. And I shared with you a dream that I had. A dream to have a new four-wheel drive truck parked in my for Christmas this year. And I want to say kudos to my wife. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll lay hands on you later, Mike. For prayer, for prayer. <laughs> so... Yeah, we were sitting there drinking a cup of coffee and I hear this little thing and the dog gets up scared and runs out of the room and this little truck comes in and she says, there's your Christmas dream, dear. <laughs> I go, oh my gosh. But, but what do you do with a dream that has yet to be fulfilled? You know, we all have dreams. God has a dream. He dreams that, that uh, you know, everyone would come to repentance. But what do you do with the dream? See, you have a dream a long time before the dream is done or finished or comes to fruition. What do you do with those type of dreams? What do you do with the dreams that are your heart's desire and, and just it's, it's what, you, what you want out of life. And if you had that in life, then you would be totally, totally satisfied. What do you do with those dreams while you're waiting for them to be fulfilled? while you're waiting for them to be enjoyed and experienced, while you're waiting for that thing that you've got in your head and in your heart, that you know down in the knower of your knower, it's what would make you complete. It's what would, and we're not talking about, you know, husbands and wives here, okay? We're just talking about there's something that God has placed in your heart that you want, that God has placed in your heart. He gives us, according to Psalms 37, uh, the desires of our heart, what do you do while you're waiting? Because we spend a lot more time in the waiting than the fulfilling, don't we? It's usually the waiting and that's when we get weary. That's why there's all kinds of scriptures. Don't grow weary in well-doing and, and, and uh, hold to the faith. Paul said, I've, I've, I've held the faith. I've run the race. There's a crown that lays up before me. How do we navigate, I guess, is what I'm trying to, 
to portray this morning, those waiting times. And I think through this scripture and I think what Jesus did, and I believe this is a picture. Communion is somewhat of a picture of how we wait. When we just read that, he's referencing Luke 22, Matthew 26, um, Mark uh, 15, 16, I believe. And he's referencing the Lord's Supper. He's referencing, he was sitting there and Paul is saying here, this is what he received. We don't know if Jesus gave it to him or he received it from the other apostles, but he was, he was telling us about the Lord's Supper. And he was telling us about what happened during the Lord's Supper and the Lord's words during the Lord's Supper. And he was saying, when you, when you do this, do it in remembrance of me. You see, an unfulfilled dream has two aspects to it. It's something to be remembered and it's something to always be recalled. You remember that dream, it's in your heart, it's in your mind, it makes you up. And you recall that there's a time coming that it's gonna happen. And you may not know when, you may not know how, it may not come even in the, the way that you thought it would come, but you always have a remembrance and a recollection, recollection because that's what keeps the dream alive. That's what keeps dream, the dream going. And here, uh, where Paul is talking about, he's talking about the Last Supper. And how many of you know the Last Supper where Jesus sat down with his disciples and he was breaking the bread and he was giving the cup and he was saying all these cool things. John 13 through 17 is a great um, couple chapters where it talks about the whole time they were up there. And he's, he's referencing... They were actually taking Passover. And if you remember what the Passover was, that happened back in Exodus when God's people had been uh, enslaved for 400 years and they cried out to God year after year and finally God showed up and he brought them out. In the book of Exodus, you can read that where he brought these, these slaves out that, that had been making mortar and, and brick uh, relentlessly their entire life. They were just beat down beat up and outcast and that's the way we feel sometimes but that's exactly how they were physically and he was saying at this Passover meal you know I want to celebrate because that's what Passover really is about it's about a celebration it's about a time where God came in and he passed over all those who did not apply the blood to the lintel of their of their doorpost and he passed over them and he made them alive and he brought them out of slavery. But there's a lot of pictures. And real briefly this morning before we take communion, because we take communion once a month, and you are welcome to take communion here. Uh, you don't have to be a member of this church. You don't even, this could be your first time. As long as you know Jesus, we, we want you to be a part of that because it's a picture of things that we need to remember and a picture of things we need to recall. And so Jesus was there and he was breaking the bread and he says, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And he was set, telling these Jewish guys who would know the history uh, better than anybody, go back to Exodus in your mind and in your heart and think about that day where you came out of Egypt. You came out of slavery and I pointed you to a land flowing with milk and honey. And that's where I'm taking you. And when you go, take bread. But make sure there's no leaven in the bread. Now, leaven would be what we would call today yeast. It was something that would make the, the bread rise and taste good and give all the calories to you when you eat it like that. That's the yeast. Thank God for yeast. But because there was such a haste to get out of Egypt, because, because God wanted them to get out and because Jesus is showing us a picture here, he said, I don't want you to have leaven in the bread. You see, leaven in scripture always represents sin. And as they were getting ready to go on a journey, God had freed them, made them victors instead of slaves to sin, victors over sin instead of slaves to it. He didn't want them to journey with that, to journey with that sin. So he said, take the yeast out. And as they traveled along in, in the, the desert, they ate bread with no yeast. And it was flat. It didn't rise. And, and on this bread was, was what... Uh, I'm going to probably mess the name up, so I'm not even going to say it, but there were, there were these things because of the way that it was cooked. There were these stripes on it. Um, you can look it up on the internet. It's, you, you'll see unleavened bread. It's got little stripes on it. And Jesus was saying, when you do this in remembrance of me, when you remember that, that Passover, remember this Passover. As you remember the old covenant, remember the new covenant. 
as, as a lamb was slain back then that had to take uh, uh, the death blow, remember me, Jesus is saying. Long before it was coming to fruition, before it was fulfilled, remember me because I'm gonna take stripes for you. And those stripes we, we find in Isaiah, uh, a prophecy from the prophet Isaiah that said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds or by his stripes, we were healed. And it's a spiritual healing and it's a physical healing. How many of you know God's still in the business of healing today? He's never given that up and never will. That's who he is. He's the healer. And so they, they, he was giving them this picture of these stripes that I too am going to be like this unleavened bread, have stripes on me. But more than that, there was, um, there was a, a way that they cooked them on this grill and the grill was called roulette, R-E-D-L-E-T. And, and it had these little, I guess for lack of a better term, these little nubs that were pointy that held the leavened bread, unleavened bread down as it cooked and as it baked. It also allowed air to go through the bread so that it wouldn't, it wouldn't rise. It wouldn't just take yeast from the air and, and rise. It would, just, it would stay flat because everything had to be done in haste. And so he was making that bread. And as, he was making, as they were making them bread, these, these holes would get into the bread. They would pierce the bread. And as the scripture teaches us, he was pierced for our transgressions he was pierced in his hands he was pierced in his feet the Roman soldier not sure that he was dead took a spear and stuck it in his side he was pierced in his side and all those piercings were for us were for you and were for me and that's what he's talking about it, as it was placed, as it, as it baked in this, this hot desert as they were going through a hot desert there's so many word pictures in here uh, he says that they shall see him to whom they pierced. Talking about Jesus. This is what Jesus is saying at this last Passover as he institutes a new covenant. The covenant that you and I are part of. A covenant of grace. That we don't have to perform a lot of rituals in order to find the favor of God. No, we never could. Jesus did. And so he did all those rituals. But he leaves us a picture so we don't miss it. Because with Jesus... There was no sin. There was no leaven in his life. He was the only pure sacrifice. You and I couldn't do that, but he did. And that's why Jesus' body, as we take communion today, I'm going to ask you to break it. Because Jesus' body was broken for us. It was broken. It was whipped. It was pierced. It was baked. But he came back alive. Amen? Amen. Those are the things we remember, but that's the thing we recall. We recall the truth in all that. His body took his stripes. His body took his, our piercings and our stripes. And that's what appeared on the bed, bread. And he was saying at that moment with his disciples, remember, remember your ancient days, that Passover lamb. Now understand that I'm the Passover lamb. I'm the one that's bruised and pierced. I'm the one that is pierced for you. He goes on to talk about the cup of the new covenant. The cup of the new covenant, there was actually a couple different cups they used at Passover. And the cup that uh, most theologians believe that he was using was called the cup of, re uh, cup of redemption. Redeeming, bringing things back, bringing people back. And that's the cup that, that most people believe that he was using. And the idea is that Jesus' blood... His blood that was shed for you, that's posted on your heart's door, is what brings you back. He took care of the sin problem with his body, and he takes care of the life problem with his blood because Scripture teaches us, and as you well know, life is in the blood. Take blood out of a person, there's no life. Take the blood of Jesus unapplied on your life, there's nothing to recall. But we remember these things. We remember because that's what God was doing through this Passover. That's the picture, some of the pictures that he was leaving for you and for I. Jesus founds a new covenant. Who would have the audacity, especially amongst a bunch of Jewish believers who are strict to their, to their religion, strict to their ritual, strict to their traditions, to be able to say, I, I'm the new covenant. This is my body. 
and this is my blood. If you recall, once in scripture, a bunch of people left him when he said that because they just didn't quite get it. He wasn't talking about his, his physical body to eat or his physical blood to drink. He talks about it in a spiritual sense. And that's what communion is. That's why we celebrate, celebrate communion. It's about remembering and it's about recalling. And when we take communion today and from this day forward, I hope that, that you take it not just with the reverence that it is due, but with an understanding that it's a picture of Jesus. And this picture goes far beyond what we traditionally see. There's, there's a picture in the bread. There's a picture in the blood. There's a picture in the breaking. There's a picture in the partaking. And it's a picture of Jesus. And really, it goes back to God's dream. It's what he wanted to do. Communion is a, is, a, is a big billboard sign of God's dream, as it says in Jeremiah 31, 34. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sins. I will remember no more. It goes on to say, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And lastly, he says in Jeremiah 31, 33, I will be their God and they will be my people. And that's what communion is is about it's a billboard it's a picture for you and i in new testament days to realize that jesus you know i think sometimes we just go over it so so fast it's kind of like a platitude where we just say jesus is the reason for the season well have you ever thought about that what does that mean to somebody who might not know jesus what does that mean maybe for you it really doesn't mean anything other than a phrase that you've spoken find out what it means Find out what communion means as we talk about this. Lastly, he goes on to say in in the last part of that verse, he says, whenever you do this, you proclaim the death, the Lord's death until he comes again. You proclaim the death, you're remembering until he comes again, you're recalling. That word proclaim means preach. Preach about the Lord's death and preach about his coming. And when you take communion today, You are going to be preaching. You are going to be saying to God, I'm remembering, Lord, I'm remembering the past. I'm remembering the Passover. I'm remembering that you are the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. I'm remembering that, but I'm also recalling because we would have no hope if there was nothing to recall. We're recalling that Jesus rose from the dead so you and I too, if we follow him, will also rise from the dead. We will be given new bodies. We get, we get it beat up in this desert called earth. We get pierced. We get striped. We do it for Jesus. That's what it means to proclaim. Proclaim the word today as you take communion. And I want to do communion with your families today. And if you don't have a family member here, jump in a circle because everybody here is family. Just jump in a circle. But as we, as we take that today, Remember that you're proclaiming not only to God, you're proclaiming to those around you, hey, hey, this is what Jesus did. I'm reminding you, you're reminding me. I'm recalling to tell you and you're recalling to tell me. And you also, you also proclaim it to the enemies of faith. You, you proclaim it to the devil. You proclaim it to Satan. And you say, let me remind you. Because of the Lord's death, he was the Passover. And because of the Lord's death, he is our life. He's bringing us out of the slavery of sin and taking us to a land flowing with milk and with honey. Amen? Now, I know I went through that real quick and, and, and all that stuff, but I just wanted to say that to say this. When you take communion this morning, and uh, if, if the uh, band could come on up, when you take communion this morning, take it in a different light. Take it in the light that, that what Jesus was saying on that very day, that new covenant that he was bringing to uh, fruition that day, Know that that's for you. And in your daily walk, remember. And in your daily walk, recall. Remember the Lord's death. His body and blood was shed on a cross for you and me. And recall his promises. His promises that says one day you too will have a new body. One day you too will be with me. John 14, 2. I go to my father's house. If it were not so, I would not have told you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to receive you so that where I am, you may be also. Let's recall that this morning as we remember through communion 
the Lord's death and we recall through communion his promises Father as we begin to take communion this morning Lord I know I said I wanted to stay within an hour but I, I don't want to belabor you or, or excuse me I don't want to rush you who can rush God so settle our hearts in here this morning as we take communion and, and may you make it something different for us today something maybe a little bit more special than what it has been in the past that we just do at the end of every month and it just happens to be December this, this month remind us as we go into a new year of the things to remember about you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son father that whosoever should believe would have everlasting life let that always be on the forefront of our mind and the forefront of our tongue. And help us to remember today as we take it that you gave us a promise. You gave us promises for this planet that we can come to the throne of grace anytime when we have a need. That you provide to us peace that passes understanding. All these promises that are for today, but Lord, I want to recall the promise for tomorrow. When the dream is finally fulfilled, when I'll be with you, you'll be with me, and we'll share an eternity that I have no earthly way of explaining, but I know it to be true. And I thank you for that today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you gather with your families this morning? And again, if you don't have a family, there's some really, really cool people in here that would invite you in. When everybody gets there, I'll, I'll give you a few more instructions. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. That me, this heart adore me. Not the bread. Oh, of a life spent with you. Light of the world. Light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see. look at this bread this morning maybe you'll look at it in a little different light but I'm gonna ask you to break it in two you know this is a broken world some of you came in here today with broken lives Jesus body was broken so that our broken lives and our broken world could know fullness so that he could put back together what happened in Genesis where he walked and talked with his people his creation as you pray in your circles, and I'm going to ask you to pray, proclaim that. Proclaim that to someone in your family. Proclaim the fact that you're reminding them that Jesus did that for you. And, and somebody else recall what Jesus is doing and what he's going to do. As I begin to pray, I encourage you to pray within your circles. Pray with your family. Because listen, if we can't proclaim to our family, who can we proclaim to? So Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we take this emblem, this bread, and we break it in remembrance of your broken body, a body that was pierced, a body that was whipped, a body that was hung on a cross, a body that was stabbed, but it's a body that was a sacrifice, a sacrifice that no one on this planet could ever achieve, only Jesus, because he was truly unleavened bread. He was sinless. As we take that today, Lord, help us to remember. Help us to remember that. Let's take and eat.
Father, as we partake of this cup, I remember your words that life is in the blood. Your words. And as we partake of this, Lord, we know it's a picture of life for us, of not only life on this planet, but an eternal life with you. We know that this blood cleanses us makes us whiter than snow, takes our sins and eradicates them because your life is in this blood. So we thank you, Lord, as we partake of this. Lord, it's not your blood or your body, but it's a picture of those things. And so, Lord, as we take today, help us to recall. Help us to recall what's going to happen. Help us to recall the promises of life eternal and everlasting. Help us to recall the fact that you are waiting and you have a mansion already in place, a place to stay for us. As we drink this today, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, let's drink together this morning. Father, we have, within our families and within our church family, we have proclaimed to remember and to recall. May this year be a year where we take that out of these doors, where we remember the sign above the door that said, this is your mission field, you're getting ready to enter it. That we would go out amongst the people that we live around in our communities, in our neighborhoods, and proclaim the death that brought us life and proclaim the blood that cleanses us from all sin that we proclaim you Lord your word declares that you create opportunities so I'm asking for a year of opportunities a year where where we can we can walk into a situation and Spirit of God you are prompting and tugging at our hearts to speak a word into the life of someone that you would even now begin to open those doors so that we can proclaim what a broken world needs to recall that there's a good God and that he loves you and gave himself for you I pray that for each and every person in this room today and every person they will come in contact with this year and I believe you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask think according to the power that is at work within us. So Spirit of God, work within us, work through us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Would you say amen with me? Amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to sing a song before we leave. Uh, we want you to walk out of here with some joy and uh, with some truth. And uh, see you next week in Jesus' name. Make sure you hug some necks before you leave this morning.